Chapter 8 And it came to be at the end of twenty years that Shelemah had built the house of Yahuwah and his own house. As to the cities which Huram had given to Shelemah, Shelemah had built them, and he settled the children of Israel there. And Shelemah went to Hamath Zobach and took hold of it, and he built Tadmor in the wilderness, and all the storage cities which he built in Hamath. And he built Upper Beth Haron and Lower Beth Haron, cities of defense, with walls, gates, and bars. Also Baalath, and all the storage cities that Shelemah had, and all the chariot cities, and the cities of the cavalry, and all that Shelemah desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his rule. All the people who were left of the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Chiwites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, their descendants who were left in the land after them, whom the children of Israel did not destroy, from these Shelemah raised compulsory labor, as it is to this day. And Shelemah did not make slaves of the children of Israel for his work, but they were men of battle, and chiefs of his officers, and commanders of his chariots and his cavalry. And these were the chiefs of the officials of sovereign Shelemah, two hundred and fifty who ruled over the people. And Shelemah brought the daughter of Pharaoh up from the city of David to the house he had built for her. For he said, My wife does not dwell in the house of David, sovereign of Israel. For the place where the ark of Yahuwah has come is set apart. Then Shelemah offered ascending offerings to Yahuwah on the slaughter place of Yahuwah, which he had built before the porch. Even as the duty of every day required, offering according to the command of Moshe, for the Sabbaths, and for the new moons, and for the appointed times, three times a year, the festival of Matzot, and the festival of Shavuot, and the festival of Sukkot. And according to the ruling of David his father, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their service, the Levites for their duties, to praise and serve before the priests as the duty of each day required, and the gatekeeper by their divisions at each gate, for so was the command of David the man of Elohim. And they did not turn aside from the command of the sovereign to the priests and Levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasuries. And all the work of Shelemah was prepared from the day of the foundation of the house of Yahuwah until it was completed. And the house of Yahuwah was perfected. Then Shelemah went to Etzion Geber and Eloth on the seacoast in the land of Edom. And Haram sent him ships by the hand of his servants, and servants who knew the sea. And they went with the servants of Shelemah to Ophir, and took four hundred and fifty talents of gold from there, and brought it to sovereign Shelemah. Chapter 9 And the sovereignness of Sheba heard of the report of Shelemah, and came to Jerusalem to try Shelemah with hard questions, with a very great company and camels bearing spices, and much gold, and precious stones. And she came to Shelemah, and she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. And Shelemah answered all her questions, and there was no matter hidden for Shelemah which he did not make known to her. And the sovereignness of Sheba saw the wisdom of Shelemah, and the house that he had built, and the food on his table, and the seating of his servants, and the service of his waiters, and their attire, and his cupbearers, and their attire and his ascending offerings that he offered up in the house of Yahuwah, and there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the sovereign, True was the word I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom, but I did not believe their words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And see, I have not been told the half of the greatness of your wisdom. You exceed the report which I heard. Blessed are your men, and blessed are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be Yahuwah your Elohim, who delighted in you, to put you on his throne to be sovereign for Yahuwah your Elohim. Because your Elohim has loved Yisrael, to establish them forever, therefore he made you sovereign over them to do right ruling and righteousness. And she gave the sovereign one hundred and twenty talents of gold, and very many spices, and precious stones. And there has not been any spices such as those the sovereignness of Sheba gave to sovereign Shelemah, and also the servants of Hram, and the servants of Shelemah, who brought gold from Ophir, brought algum wood, 
and precious stones. And the sovereign made stairs of the algum wood for the house of Yahuwah, and for the sovereign's house, also lyres and harps for singers. And there was never seen the like of them before in the land of Yehuda. And sovereign Shalema gave to the sovereigness of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides that which the merchants and traders brought. And all the sovereigns of Arabia and governors of the land were bringing gold and silver to Shalema. And sovereign Shalema made two hundred large shields of beaten gold. Six hundred pieces of beaten gold went into each shield, and three hundred shields of beaten gold. Three hundred pieces of gold went into each shield. And the sovereign put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. And the sovereign made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with clean gold. And six steps led to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and there were armrests on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the armrests, and twelve lions were standing there, one on each side of the six steps. The like of it was not in any rain, and all the drinking vessels of sovereign Shelema were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of refined gold. Silver was reckoned of little value in the days of Shelema, for the sovereign ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram. Once in three years the ships of Tarshish came, bringing gold and silver, ivory, apes, and baboons. And sovereign Shelema became greater than all the sovereigns of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the sovereigns of the earth sought the presence of Shelema to hear his wisdom which Elohim had put in his heart. And each man brought his present, objects of silver and objects of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules, the matter of a year by year. And Shelema had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities, and with the sovereign at Jerusalem. And he ruled over all the sovereigns from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Mitzrayim. And the sovereign made silver in Jerusalem as the stones, and he made cedar trees as plenty as the sycamores which are in the low country. And they were bringing horses to Shelema from Mitzrayim and from all the lands. And the rest of the acts of Shelema, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahio the Shalonite, and in the visions of Edo the seer concerning Jeroboam son of Nabat? And Shelema reigned in Jerusalem over all Yisrael forty years. So Shelema slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehabam his son, reigned in his place. Chapter 10 And Rehabam went to Shechem, for all Yisrael had gone to Shechem to set him up to reign. And it came to be when Jeroboam, son of Nabat, heard it, he was in Mitzrayim, where he had fled from the presence of Shelema the sovereign, that Yerobam returned from Mitzrayim. So they sent for him and called him, and the Arabam and all Yisrael came and spoke to Rehabam, saying, Your father made our yoke hard, and now lighten the hard service of your father, and his heavy yoke which he put on us, then we shall serve you. And he said to them, Come back to me after three days. And the people went. Then sovereign Rehabam consulted the elders who stood before his father Shelema while he still lived, saying, What do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you are good to these people, and shall please them, and speak good words to them, they shall be your servants all the days. But he ignored the advice the elders gave him, and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And he said to them, What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? And the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Say this to the people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Say this to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist, and now my father put a heavy yoke on you, but I, I add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I with scourges. So Yerobam and all the people came to Rehabam on the third day as the sovereign commanded, saying, Come back to me the third day. 
And the sovereign answered them harshly. Thus the sovereign Rehoboam ignored the advice of the elders and spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I, I add to it. My father chastised you with whips, but I with scourges. So the sovereign did not listen to the people, for the turn of events was from Elohim, in order for Yahuwah to establish his word, which he had spoken by the hand of Ahiyahu the Shilonite to Yerabam son of Nabat. And when all Yisrael saw that the sovereign did not listen to them, the people answered the sovereign, saying, What portion have we in David? And we have no inheritance in the son of Yeshai, every man to your mighty ones, O Yisrael. Now see to your own house, O David. So all Yisrael went to their tents. But as for the children of Yisrael who dwelt in the cities of Yehuda, Rehabam reigned over them. Then sovereign Rehabam sent Hadoram, who was over the compulsory labor. And the children of Yisrael stoned him with stones, and he died. And sovereign Rehabam hastily mounted his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Thus Yisrael revolted against the house of David to this day. Chapter 11 And when Rehabam came to Jerusalem, he assembled from the house of Yehuda and Benjamin 180,000 chosen brave men to fight against Yisrael, to bring back the rain to Rehabam. But the word of Yahuwah came to Shemiyahu, the man of Elohim, saying, Speak to Rehabam, son of Shalomo, sovereign of Yehuda, and to all Yisrael in Yehuda and Benjamin, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, Do not go up or fight against your brothers. Let every man return to his house, for this matter is from me. So they obeyed the words of Yahuwah, and turned back from going against Yerobam. And Rehabam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Yehuda. And he built Bethlehem, and Itam, and Kawa, and Bethzur, and Soko, and Adullam, and Gath, and Marasha, and Ziph, and Adoraim, and Lekish, and Azekah, and Zorah, and Eilon, and Hebron, which are in Yehuda and Benjamin, cities of defense. And he strengthened the strongholds, and put commanders in them, and stores of food, and oil, and wine and shields, and spears in every city, and made them very strong. Thus Yehuda and Benjamin were his. And from all their borders, the priests and the Levites who were in all Israel took their stand with him. For the Levites left their open lands and their possessions and came to Yehuda and Jerusalem. For Yerobam and his sons had rejected them from serving as priests unto Yahuwah. And he appointed for himself priests for the high places and for goats and the calf idols which he had made. And after the Levites left, those from all the tribes of Israel, such as set their heart to seek Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, came to Jerusalem to slaughter to Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers. And they strengthened the reign of Yehuda, and made Rehabam son of Shalomah strong for three years, for they walked in the way of David and Shalomah for three years. And Rehabam took for himself as wife Mahalaleth, the daughter of Yeremoth, son of David, and of Abichayil, the daughter of Eliab, son of Yeshai. And she bore him sons, Yeush and Shemariah, and Zoham. And after her he took Makkah, the granddaughter of Absalom. And she bore him Abiah, and Atai, and Ziza, and Shelomith. And Rehabam loved Makkah, the granddaughter of Absalom, more than all his wives and his concubines, for he had taken eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and brought forth twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. And Rehabam appointed Abiah, son of Makkah, as chief to be leader among his brothers, in order to make him reign. And he had understanding, and dispersed some of his sons throughout all the lands of Yehuda and Benjamin to all the cities of defense, and gave them ample provision, and he sought many wives for them. Chapter 12 and it came to be when Rehoboam had established the reign and had strengthened himself that he forsook the Torah of Yahuwah and all Yisrael with him. And it came to be in the fifth year of sovereign Rehoboam that Shishak, sovereign of Mitzrayim, came up against Jerusalem, because they had trespassed against Yahuwah with twelve hundred chariots and sixty thousand horsemen and innumerable people who came with him out of Mitzrayim, the Lubim, 
the Sukites, and the Cushites. And he took the cities of defense of Yehuda and came to Jerusalem. And Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehabam, and the rulers of Yehuda who had been gathered in Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said to them, Thus says Yahuwah, You have forsaken me, and I therefore, I also have left you in the hand of Shishak. Then the rulers of Israel and the sovereign humbled themselves, and they said, Yahuwah is righteous. And when Yahuwah saw that they humbled themselves, the word of Yahuwah came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves. I do not destroy them, but I shall give to them some deliverance, and not pour out my wrath on Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. But they are to become his servants, so that they know my service and the service of the reign of the lands. And Shishak, sovereign of Mitzrayim, came up against Jerusalem, and took away the treasures of the house of Yahuwah, and the treasures of the sovereign's house. He took all. He also took the gold shields which Shelema had made. And sovereign Rehabam made bronze shields to replace them, and committed them into the hands of the chiefs of the guard, who guarded the entrance of the sovereign's house. And it came to be, whenever the sovereign went into the house of Yahuwah, the guard would go and bring them out. Then they would take them back into the guard room. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of Yahuwah turned from him, so as not to destroy him completely. And matters also went well in Yehuda. So sovereign Rehabam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehabam was forty-one years old when he became sovereign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahuwah had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama the Ammonites, and he did evil, because he did not prepare his heart to seek Yahuwah. And the acts of Rehabam, the first and the last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet, and of Edo the seer, concerning genealogies? And there was fighting between Rehabam and Yerabam all the days. So Rehabam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, and Abiah his son reigned in his place. Chapter 13 In the eighteenth year of sovereign Yerabam, Abiah began to reign over Yehuda. He reigned three years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Mikiyahu, the daughter of Uriel of Giba. And there was fighting between Abiah and Yerabam. And Abiah joined battle with an army of mighty men of battle, four hundred thousand choice men. And Yerabam drew up in battle formation against him with eight hundred thousand choice men, mighty brave men. And Abiah stood on Mount Zemaraim, which is in the mountains of Ephraim, and said, Hear me, Yerabam, and all Yisrael. Do you not know that Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael has given the reign of Yisrael to David forever to him and his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Yerabam, son of Nabat, the servant of Shalomah, son of David, rose up and rebelled against his master. And vain men gathered to him, sons of Belial and strengthened themselves against Rehabam, son of Shelemah, when Rehabam was young and tender of heart and could not be strong against them. And now you think to be strong against the reign of Yahuwah, which is in the hand of the sons of David. And you are a large crowd, and with you are the gold calves which Jerabam made for you as mighty ones. Have you not thrown out the priests of Yahuwah, the sons of Aharon, and the Levites, and made for yourselves priests? like the peoples of the lands, so that whoever comes to ordain himself with a young bull and seven rams then becomes a priest of what are not mighty ones. But as for us, Yahuwah is our Elohim, and we have not forsaken him, and the priests are serving Yahuwah, the sons of Aharon and the Levites in the work, and are burning to Yahuwah every morning and every evening ascending offerings and sweet incense, and the showbread is set on the clean table, and the lampstand of gold, with its lamps to burn every evening, for we are guarding the charge of Yahuwah our Elohim, but you have forsaken him. And see, with us as head is Elohim himself, and his priests with sounding trumpets to sound alarm against you, O children of Yisrael. Do not fight against Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers, for you are not going to prosper. But Yerobam sent round an ambush to go behind them, so they were in front of Yehuda, and the ambush was behind them. And Yehuda turned and saw the battle was both in front and behind them. Then they cried out to Yahuwah, 
and the priests sounded the trumpets. And the men of Yehuda gave a shout. And it came to be as the men of Yehuda shouted that Elohim smote Yerobam and all Yisrael before Abiah and Yehuda. And the children of Yisrael fled before Yehuda, and Elohim gave them into their hand. And Abiah and his people struck them with a great slaughter, and five hundred thousand choice men of Yisrael fell slain. And the children of Yisrael were humbled at that time, while the children of Yehuda prevailed, because they relied on Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers. And Abiah pursued Yerobam and captured cities from him, Bethel with its villages, and Yeshana with its villages, and Ephron with its villages. And Yerobam did not regain power again in the days of Abiyahu. And Yahuwah smote him, and he died. And Abiah became strong and took fourteen wives and brought forth twenty-two sons and sixteen daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abiah and his ways and his words are written in the commentary of the prophet Edo. Chapter 14 So Abiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa his son reigned in his place. In his days the land rested ten years. And Asa did what was good and what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah his Elohim, and removed the slaughter places of the foreigner and the high places, and broke down the pillars, and cut down the Asherim, and commanded Yehuda to seek Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers, and to do the Torah and the command. And he removed the high places and the sun pillars from all the cities of Yehuda, and the rain rested under him. And he built cities of defense in Yehuda, since the land had rest, and he had no fighting in those years, because Yahuwah had given him rest. And he said to Yehuda, Let us build these cities and make walls around them, and towers and gates and bars while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought Yahuwah our Elohim, we have sought, and He has given us rest all around. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of three hundred thousand men from Yehuda, bearing shield and spears, and from Benjamin, two hundred and eighty thousand men bearing shields and drew bows. All of them were mighty brave men. And Zirach, the Cushite, came out against them with an army of a million men and three hundred chariots, and who came to Marashah. And Asa went out against him, and they set battle array in the valley of Sephathath at Marashah. And Asa called to Yahuwah his Elohim and said, Yahuwah, there is no one but you to help between the mighty and the powerless. Help us, O Yahuwah our Elohim, for we rest on you. And in your name we go out against this crowd, O Yahuwah. You are our Elohim. Do not let man prevail against you. So Yahuwah smote the Cushites before Asa and Yehuda, and the Cushites fled. And Asa and the people who were with him pursued them to Gerar. And the Cushites fell until none was left alive for them for they were broken before Yahuwah and his army, and they took very much spoil, and struck all the cities around Gerar, for the fear of Yahuwah came upon them, and they plundered all the cities, for there was exceedingly much spoil in them. And they also struck the camps of the herdsmen, and captured many sheep and camels, and returned to Jerusalem. Chapter 15 And the Spirit of Elohim came upon Azariahu, son of Oded, And he went out to face Asa, and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Yehuda and Benjamin. Yahuwah is with you while you are with him. And if you seek him, he is found by you. But if you forsake him, he forsakes you. And for many days Israel has been without the true Elohim, and without a Torah priest, and without Torah But in their distress they turned to Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, and they sought him, and he was found by them. And in those days there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in, for great disturbances were on all the inhabitants of the lands. And they were beaten down, nation by nation and city by city, for Elohim troubled them with every distress. But you, be strong, and do not let your hands be feeble, for there is a reward for your work. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he strengthened himself 
and removed the abomination from all the land of Yehuda and Benjamin, and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim, and restored the slaughter place of Yahuwah that was before the porch of Yahuwah, and gathered all Yahuda and Benjamin, and those who sojourned with them from Ephraim, and Manasseh, and Shimon, for they came over to him in great numbers from Yisrael, when they saw that Yahuwah his Elohim was with him. And they gathered together at Yerushalayim in the third new moon, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa, and slaughtered to Yahuwah on that day seven hundred bulls and seven thousand sheep from the spoil which they had brought. And they entered into a covenant to seek Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers with all their heart and with all their being. And whoever would not seek Yahuwah Elohim of Israel would be put to death from small to great, from man to woman. And they swore to Yahuwah with a loud voice, with shouting and with trumpets and with shofarot. And all Yehuda rejoiced concerning the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their being. And he was found by them. And Yahuwah gave them rest all around. And he also removed Makkah, the mother of Asa the sovereign, from being sovereigness's mother, because she had made an abominable image of Asherah. And Asa cut down her abominable image and crushed it and burned it by the Wadi Kidron. Yet the high places were not removed from Yisrael. However, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of Elohim the set-apart items of his father and his own set-apart items, silver and gold and utensils. And there was no more fighting until the thirty-fifth year of the reign of Asa. Chapter 16 In the thirty-sixth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, the sovereign of Israel, came up against Yehuda and built Ramah to prevent anyone going out or coming into Asa, sovereign of Yehuda. And Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of Yahuwah and of the sovereign's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, sovereign of Aram, who dwelt in Damasek, saying, Let there be a covenant between you and me. And as there was between my father and your father, See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your covenant with Baasha, sovereign of Israel, so that he withdraws from me. And Ben-Hadad listened to sovereign Asa and sent the commanders of his army against the cities of Israel. And they struck Ion and Dan and Abel Ma'ayim and all the storage cities of Naphtali. And it came to be when Baasha heard it that he stopped building Ramah and ceased his work. Then Asa the sovereign brought all Yehuda, and they took away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Basha had used for building. And with them he built Giba and Mitzpah. And at that time Hanani the seer came to Asa, sovereign of Yehuda, and said to him, Because you have relied on sovereign of Aram, and have not relied on Yahuwah your Elohim, therefore the army of the sovereign of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were the Cushites and the Lubim not a mighty army? with very many chariots and horsemen. And because you relied on Yahuwah, he gave them into your hand. For the eyes of Yahuwah diligently searched throughout all the earth to show himself to be strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect to him. You have acted foolishly in this, so from now on you shall have battles. And Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in prison, for he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. And look, the acts of Asa, the first and the last, see they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Yehuda and Yisrael. And in the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his disease was severe. Yet even in his disease he did not seek Yahuwah, but the physicians. So Asa slept with his fathers and died in the forty-first year of his reign. And they buried him in his burial site, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And they laid him in the bed, which was filled with spices and various kinds of ointments, mixed by the perfumer's skill. And they made a very great burning for him. Chapter 17 And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his place, and strengthened himself against Israel, and placed an army in all the walled cities of Yehuda, and set watchposts in the lands of Yehuda, and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. And Yahuwah was with Jehoshaphat, for he walked in the former ways of his father David, and did not seek the Baals, but sought the Elohim of his father, and walked in his commands, 
and not according to the deeds of Yisrael. So Yahuwah established the rain in his hand, and all Yahuda gave presents to Yehoshaphat, and he had great riches and esteem. And his heart was exalted in the ways of Yahuwah, and he again removed the high places and the Asherim from Yahuda. And in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders, ben Khalil and Obadiah, and Zechariah, and Nathaniel, and Mekiyahu to teach in the cities of Yehuda. And with them he sent Levites, Shemiyahu, and Nathanyahu, and Zebedyahu, and Asahel, and Sheriamoth, and Yohanathan, and Adonaiyahu, and Tobayahu, and Tobadonaiyahu, the Levites, and with them Elishema, and Yehoram, the priests. And they taught in Yehuda, and with them was the book of the Torah of Yahuwah. And they went around into all the cities of Yehuda and taught the people. And the fear of Yahuwah fell on all the reins of the lands that were around Yehuda, and they did not fight against Jehoshaphat. And some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat gifts and a load of silver, and the Arabians brought him flocks, seven thousand seven hundred rams and seven thousand seven hundred male goats. And Jehoshaphat became increasingly great, and he built palaces and storage cities in Yehuda. And he had much work in the cities of Yehuda, and the men of battle, mighty brave men, were in Jerusalem, and these were their numbers according to their fathers' houses. Of Yehuda, the commanders of thousands, Adna the commander, and with him three hundred thousand mighty brave men, and next to him was Jehokanan the commander, and with him two hundred and eighty thousand, and next to him was Amasiah, son of Zikri who volunteered himself to Yahuwah, and with him two hundred thousand mighty brave men, and of Benjamin, Eliada, a mighty brave one, and with him two hundred thousand men armed with bow and shield, and next to him was Jehozabad, and with him one hundred and eighty thousand prepared for battle. These were the ones serving the sovereign, besides those whom the sovereign put in the walled cities throughout all Yehuda. Chapter 18 And Jehoshaphat had great riches and esteem and allied himself with Ahab by marriage. And some years later he went down to visit Ahab in Shamaron. And Ahab slaughtered many sheep and cattle for him and the people with him and incited him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, sovereign of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, Do you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as you are, and my people is your people, even with you in battle. And Jehoshaphat said to the sovereign of Israel, Please inquire for the word of Yahuwah today. And the sovereign of Israel gathered the prophets together, four hundred men, and said to them, Do we go up against Ramoth Gilad to battle, or do I refrain? And they said, Go up, for Elohim does give it into the sovereign's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not still a prophet of Yahuwah here, so that we inquire of him? And the sovereign of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man to inquire of Yahuwah from him, but I hate him, because he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Mikiyahu, the son of Yimla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the sovereign say so. So the sovereign of Israel called one of his officers and said, Bring Mekiehu, son of Yimlad, once. And the sovereign of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the sovereign of Yehuda, dressed in their robes, sat each on his throne. And they sat at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Shamaron. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. And Zedekiahu, son of Kenana, had made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus said Yahuwah, with these you push the Armenians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets were prophesying, saying, Go up to Ramath Gilad, and prosper, and Yahuwah shall give it into the hand of the sovereign. And the messenger who had gone to call Mikiehu spoke to him, saying, See, the words of the prophets with one mouth are good towards the sovereign. So please, let your word be like the word of one of them, and you shall speak good. And Mikiyehu said, As Yahuwah lives, whatever my Elohim says, that I speak. And he came to the sovereign, and the sovereign said to him, 
My car. Do we go against Ramoth Gilad to battle, or do I refrain? And he said, Go, and prosper, and they are given into your hand. And the sovereign said to him, How many times have I made you swear that you do not speak to me except the truth in the name of Yahuwah? So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And Yahuwah said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the sovereign of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not say to you that he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Then he said, Therefore hear the word of Yahuwah. I saw Yahuwah sitting on his throne, and all the host of the heavens standing on his right and on his left. And Yahuwah said, Who shall entice Ahab, sovereign of Israel, to go up and fall at Ramoth Gilad? And one said this, and another said that. And a spirit came forward and stood before Yahuwah and said, Let me entice him. Yahuwah said to him, In what way? And he said, I shall go out and be a spirit of falsehood in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said to him, Entice him, and also prevail. Go out and do so. And now see, Yahuwah has put a spirit of falsehood in the mouth of these prophets of yours. And Yahuwah has spoken evil concerning you. And Zedekiah, son of Kenana, came near and struck Micah on the cheek and said, Which way did the spirit of Yahuwah pass over from me to speak to you? And Micah said, Look, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner room to hide. Then the sovereign of Israel said, Take Micah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Yoash, the sovereign's son, and say, Thus said the sovereign, Put this one in prison, and feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micah said, If you return it all in peace, Yahuwah has not spoken by me. And he said, Hear all you people. Then the sovereign of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the sovereign of Yehuda, went up to Ramoth Gilad. And the sovereign of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Let me disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. And the sovereign of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. And the sovereign of Aram had commanded the commanders of the chariots who were with him, saying, Fight with no one, small or great, but only with the sovereign of Israel. And it came to be when the commanders of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, It is the sovereign of Israel. So they turned around to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out, and Yahuwah helped him. And Elohim moved them to turn away from him. And it came to be when the commanders of the chariots saw that it was not the sovereign of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And a man drew a bow in his simplicity and struck the sovereign of Israel between the joints of his armor. And he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around! Uh, Take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. But the battle increased that day, and the sovereign of Israel was propped up in his chariot facing the Armenians until evening. And he died at the time of the going down of the sun. Chapter 19 And Jehoshaphat the sovereign of Yehuda returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem. And Yehu, son of Hanani the seer, went out to face him and said to sovereign Jehoshaphat, Do you help the wrong and love those who hate Yahuwah? Therefore the wrath of Yahuwah is upon you. But good matters are found in you, in that you have removed the Asheroth from the land and have prepared your heart to seek Elohim. So Jehoshaphat dwelt in Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, and brought them back to Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers. And he appointed judges in the land, in all the walled cities of Yehuda, city by city, and said to the judges, Watch what you are doing, for you do not judge for man but for Yahuwah, who is with you in the matter of right ruling. And now let the fear of Yahuwah be upon you, And guard and do it, for there is no unrighteousness with Yahuwah or Elohim, nor partiality, nor taking of bribes. And in Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat also appointed some of the Levites and priests, and some of the chief fathers of Israel, for the right ruling of Yahuwah and for dispute. Then they returned to Jerusalem, and he commanded them, saying, Do this in the fear of Yahuwah trustworthily, and with a perfect heart. 
When any dispute comes to you from your brothers who dwell in their cities between blood and blood, between Torah and command, laws and right rulings, then you shall warn them, lest they trespass against Yahuwah and wrath come upon you and your brothers. Do this and you shall not be guilty. And look, Amariahu, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of Yahuwah. And Zebdiahu, son of Yishmael, the ruler of the house of Yehuda, for all the matters of the sovereign, and the Levites are officials before you. Be strong and do, and Yahuwah is with the good. Chapter 20 And after this it came to be that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon came in, and with them some of the peoples against Jehoshaphat to battle. And they came and spoke to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great army is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Aram. And see, they are in Chatzatzon, Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek Yahuwah, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Yahuda. And Yahuda gathered to inquire of Yahuwah, even from all the cities of Yahuda, that he came to seek Yahuwah. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Yahuda and Jerusalem, in the house of Yahuwah, in front of the new courtyard, and said, O oh, Yahuwah, Elohim of our fathers, are you not Elohim in the heavens? And do you not rule over all the reigns of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to stand against you? Are you not our Elohim? You have driven out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Yisrael, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, who loves you forever. And they dwell in it, and have built you a set-apart place in it for your name, saying, If evil does come upon us, such as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or scarcity of food, we shall stand before this house and in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you in our distresses, and you do hear and save. And now see the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, among whom you would not let Israel invade, when they came out at the land of Mitzrayim. For they turned from them and did not destroy them. And see, they are repaying us by coming in to drive us out of your possession which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our Elohim, would you not judge them? For we are powerless against this great army that is coming against us. And we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And all Yehuda, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before Yahuwah. And the spirit of Yahuwah came upon Yahaziel, son of Zechariahu, son of Benaiah, son of Ya'iel, son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all Yehuda, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and sovereign Jehoshaphat. Thus said Yahuwah to you, Do not fear, nor be afraid of the face of this great army, for the battle is not yours but Elohim's. Go down against them tomorrow. See, they are coming up by the ascent of Tzitz, and you shall find them at the end of the Wadi before the wilderness of Yeruel. It is not for you to fight in this. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the deliverance of Yahuwah with you. O Yahuda and Jerusalem, do not be afraid nor fear. Go out against them tomorrow, for Yahuwah is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before Yahuwah to bow themselves before Yahuwah. And the Levites of the children of the Kehathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise Yahuwah Elohim of Israel with exceedingly loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Yahuda, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, Trust in Yahuwah your Elohim, and be steadfast. Trust his prophets and prosper. And after consulting with the people, he appointed those who should sing to Yahuwah, and who should praise the splendor of set-apartness as they went out before the army and were saying, Give thanks to Yahuwah, for his loving commitment is everlasting. And when they began singing and praising, Yahuwah set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Yahuda, and they were smitten. Then the children of Ammon 
and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. And when Yehuda came at the lookout in the wilderness, they looked toward the army and saw their dead bodies lying on the ground, and none had escaped. And Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, and they found among them a great amount of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could take away. And they were three days plundering the spoil, for it was much. And on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Berakah, for there they blessed Yahuwah. Therefore the name of that place was called the valley of Berakah to this day. Then they returned every man of Yehuda and Jerusalem, with Jehoshaphat in front of them, to go back to Jerusalem with joy, for Yahuwah had made them rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with harps and lyres and trumpets to the house of Yahuwah. And the fear of Elohim was on all the reins of the lands when they heard that Yahuwah had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the reign of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his Elohim gave him rest on all sides. Thus Jehoshaphat reigned over Yehuda, thirty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilchai. And he walked in the way of his father Asa, and did not turn aside from doing it, doing what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah. Only the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts for the Elohim of their fathers. And the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, the first and the last, See, they are written in the book of Yehu, son of Hanani, which is mentioned in the book of the sovereigns of Israel. And after this, Jehoshaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, joined himself with Ahaziah, sovereign of Israel. He did wrong in doing so. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships in Etzion Geber. Then Eleazar, son of Dodowahu, of Marasha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, because you have joined yourself with Ahaz Yahu, Yahuwah shall break your work. And the ships were wrecked, so that they were unable to go to Tarshish. Chapter 21 And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram his son reigned in his place. And he had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariahu and Yechiel, and Zechariahu, and Azariahu, and Mikael, and Shephatiyahu. All these were sons of Jehoshaphat, sovereign of Israel. And their father gave them many gifts of silver and gold and precious items with walled cities in Yehuda. But he had given the reign to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. And when Jehoram had risen up over the reign of his father and strengthened himself, he killed all his brothers with the sword, and also others of the heads of Israel. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the ways of the sovereigns of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done. For he had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. However, Yahuwah would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant he had made with David, and since he had promised to give a lamp to him and to his sons all the days. In his days the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Yehuda, and appointed a sovereign over themselves. And Jehoram went out with his officials and all his chariots with him. And it came to be that he rose by night and struck the Edomites, who had surrounded him and the commanders of the chariots. Thus the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Yehuda to this day. Then Libna revolted from under his hand, because he had forsaken Yahuwah Elohim of his fathers. He had also made high places in the mountains of Yehuda, and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit whoring, and led Yehuda astray. And a letter came to him from Eliyahu the prophet, saying, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of your father David, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat your father, or in the ways of Asa sovereign of Yehuda, but have walked in the way of the sovereigns of Israel and have made Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit whoring, like the whorings of the house of Ahab, and also have killed your brothers, those of your father's household, 
who were better than yourself. See, Yahuwah is going to strike you with a great blow among your people, your children, your wives, and all your possessions. And you, with many sicknesses, with disease of your intestines, until your intestines come out because of the sickness, day by day. And Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of the Philistines against Yehoram and of the Arabians who were near the Cushites. And they came up into Yehuda and broke into it and captured all the possessions that were found in the sovereign's house and also his sons and his wives, so that there was not a son left to him except Yehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, Yahuwah plagued him in his intestines with a disease for which there was no healing. And it came to be in the course of time, at the end of two years, that his intestines came out because of his sickness, and he died in great pain. And his people made no burning for him, like the burning for his fathers. He was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem, to no one's regret, and passed away. And they buried him in the city of David, but not in the burial sites of the sovereigns. Chapter 22 And the inhabitants of Jerusalem set up Echaziahu, his youngest son, to reign in his place. For the raiding band that came with the Arabians into the camp had killed all the older sons. So Echaziahu, son of Yehoram, sovereign of Yehuda, reigned. Echaziahu was forty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. And his mother's name was Athaliahu, the granddaughter of Omri. He too walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother counseled him to do wrong, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. He also walked in their counsel, and went with Yehoram, son of Ahab, sovereign of Israel, to fight against Hazel, sovereign of Aram, at Ramoth Gilad, and the Armenians struck Yoram. And he returned to Yisrael to recover from the strikings with which they struck him at Ramah, when he fought against Hazel, sovereign of Aram. And Azariahu, son of Yehoram, sovereign of Yehuda, went down to see Yehoram, son of Ahab, in Yisrael, for he was sick. But from Elohim came the downfall of Ahaziahu, through his coming to Yoram. For when he came, he went out with Yehoram against Yehu, son of Nimshi, who Yahuwah had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it came to be when Yehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, that he found the rulers of Yehuda and the sons of Ahaziahu's brothers, who served Ahaziahu and killed them. So he searched for Ahaziahu, and they caught him, while he was hiding in Shamaron, and brought him to Yehu, and put him to death, then buried him, for they said, he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought Yahuwah with all his heart. And there was none in the house of Ahaziahu strong enough to reign. And when Athaliahu, the mother of Ahaziahu, saw that her son was dead, she rose up and destroyed all the offspring of the reign of the house of Yehuda. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the sovereign, took Joash, son of Ahaziahu, and stole him away from among the sovereign's sons who were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. So Jehoshaphat, the daughter of sovereign Yehoram, the wife of Jehoiada, the priest, because she was the sister of Ahaziahu, hid him from Athaliahu, so that she could not put him to death. And he was hidden with them in the house of Elohim for six years, while Athaliahu was reigning over the land. Chapter 23 And in the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and made a covenant with the commanders of hundreds, Azariah, son of Yeroham, and Yishmael, son of Yochanan, and Azariahu, son of Obed, and Maseyahu, son of Adoyahu, and Elashaphat, son of Zikri. And they went about through Yehuda and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Yehuda, and the chiefs of the fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. And all the assembly made a covenant with the sovereign in the house of Elohim. And he said to them, See, the son of the sovereign is to reign as Yahuwah has said of the sons of David. This is what you do, one-third of you entering on the Sabbath of the priests and the Levites, gatekeepers of the thresholds, and one-third are at the sovereign's house, and one-third at the gate of the foundation, 
while all the people are in the courtyards of the house of Yahuwah. And let no one come into the house of Yahuwah except the priests and those of the Levites who serve. They go in, for they are set apart. But all the people are to guard the charge of Yahuwah. And the Levites shall surround the sovereign on all sides, every man with his weapon in his hand. And whoever comes into the house, let him be put to death, and be with the sovereign when he comes in and when he goes out. And the Levites and all the Yehudah did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And each man took his men who were to come in on the Sabbath with those going out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada the priest did not dismiss the divisions. And Jehoiada the priest gave to the commanders of hundreds the spears and the large and small shields which had been sovereign David's that were in the house of Elohim. And he set all the people, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the house to the left side of the house, along by the slaughter place and by the house, all around the sovereign. And they brought out the son of the sovereign and put on him the diadem and the witness and set him up to reign. Then Jehoiada and his son anointed him and said, Let the sovereign live! And Athaliahu heard the noise of the people running and praising the sovereign And she came to the people in the house of Yahuwah and looked and saw the sovereign standing by his column at the entrance. And the chiefs and the trumpeters were beside the sovereign and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets, also the singers with instruments of song and those who led in praise. Then Athaliahu tore her garments and said, Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest brought out the commanders of hundreds who were set over the army and said to them, Take her outside the ranks and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest said, Do not kill her in the house of Yahuwah. So they laid hands on her, and she went by the entrance of the horse gate into the sovereign's house, and they put her to death there. Jehoiada then made a covenant between himself and the people and the sovereign to be the people of Yahuwah. And all the people went to the house of Baal and broke it down. They completely broke up its slaughter places and images and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the slaughter places. And Jehoiada put the offices of the house of Yahuwah into the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had assigned in the house of Yahuwah, to offer the ascending offerings of Yahuwah, as it is written in the Torah of Moshe, with rejoicing and with singing by the hands of David. And he set the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of Yahuwah, so that no one who was in any way unclean should enter. And he took the commanders of hundreds and the nobles and the governors of the people and all the people of the land and brought the sovereign down from the house of Yahuwah. And they went through the upper gate to the sovereign's house and set the sovereign on the throne of the reign. And all the people of the land rejoiced and the city had rest for they had slain Athaliahu with the sword. Chapter 24 Yoash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. And the name of his mother was Zibiah of Beersheba. And Yoash did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah all the days of Jehoiada the priest. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he brought forth sons and daughters. And after this it came to be that Yoash set his heart on restoring the house of Yahuwah. And he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Yehuda, and gather from all Yisrael silver to repair the house of your Elohim from year to year, and see that you hurry the matter. But the Levites did not hurry it. And the sovereign called Jehoiada the chief and said to him, Why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Yehuda, and from Jerusalem the levy of Moshe the servant of Yahuwah, and of the assembly of Yisrael, for the tent of the witness? For the sons of Athaliahu, That wrong woman had broken into the house of Elohim and had also prepared all the set-apart vessels of the house of Yahuwah to the Baals. So the sovereign commanded, and they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of Yahuwah and made it known in Yehuda and in Jerusalem to bring to Yahuwah the levy that Moshe, the servant of Elohim, had imposed on Yisrael in the wilderness. And all the rulers and all the people rejoiced And they brought in and put them into the chest to completion. And it came to be at that time, 
when the chest was brought to the sovereign's official by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much silver, that the sovereign's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it and returned it to its place. So they did day by day and gathered a large amount of silver. And the sovereign and Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of the house of Yahuwah. And they hired stonemasons and carpenters to restore the house of Yahuwah, and also those who worked in iron and bronze to repair the house of Yahuwah. And the workmen labored, and the work of restoration progressed in their hands. And they established the house of Elohim to its proper form and strengthened it. And when they had finished, they brought the rest of the silver before the sovereign and Jehoiada, and they made utensils from it for the house of Yahuwah, utensils for serving and offering, ladles and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered ascending offerings in the house of Yahuwah continually all the days of Jehoiada. And Jehoiada was old and satisfied with days and died, 130 years old when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the sovereigns, for he had done good in Israel, both toward Elohim and his house. And after the death of Jehoiada, the rulers of Yehuda came and bowed themselves to the sovereign. And the sovereign listened to them. And they forsook the house of Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers, and served the Asherim and the idols. And wrath came upon Yahuda and Jerusalem because of their trespass. And he sent prophets to them to bring them back to Yahuwah, and they witnessed against them, but they did not listen. Then the spirit of Elohim came upon Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, the priest, who stood above the people, and said to them, Thus said Elohim, why are you transgressing the commands of Yahuwah and do not prosper? Because you have forsaken Yahuwah and he has forsaken you. And they conspired against him. And at the command of the sovereign, they stoned him with stones in the courtyard of the house of Yahuwah. Thus Yoash the sovereign did not remember the loving commitment which Jehoiada his father had done to him and killed his son. And as he died, he said, Yahuwah does see and repay. And it came to be at the turn of the year that the army of Aram came up against him, and they came into Yehuda and Jerusalem and destroyed all the rulers of the people from among the people and sent all their spoil to the sovereign of Darmasek. For the army of Aram came with few men, but Yahuwah gave a very great army into their hand because they had forsaken Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Yoash. And when they had withdrawn from him, for they left him very sick, his own servants conspired against him because of the blood of the sons of Jehoiada, the priest, and killed him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the burial sites of the sovereigns. And these are the ones who conspired against him. Zabad, the son of Shemath, the Ammonitess, and Jehozabad, the son of Shimrith, the Moabitess. As to his sons and the many words about him and the rebuilding of the house of Elohim, see, they are written in the commentary of the book of the sovereigns. And Amatziyahu, his son, reigned in his place. Chapter 25 Amatziyahu was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. And the name of his mother was Jehoiadon of Jerusalem, And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, but not with a perfect heart. And it came to be upon his control of the reign that he killed his servants who had struck his father, the sovereign. But he did not put their children to death, but did as it is written in the Torah, in the book of Moshe, where Yahuwah commanded, saying, Fathers are not put to death for their children, and children are not put to death for their fathers, but each one has to die for his own sin. And Amatsiyahu gathered Yehuda and set over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, according to the father's houses, for all Yehuda and Benjamin. And he registered them from twenty years old and above, and found them to be three hundred thousand choice men going out to the army, handling spear and shield." And he hired 100,000 mighty brave ones from Israel for 100 talents of silver. But a man of Elohim came to him, saying, O oh, sovereign, do not let the army of Israel go with you, for Yahuwah is not with Israel, 
with all the children of Ephraim. But if you are going, do it. Be strong in battle, else Elohim would make you fall before the enemy. For Elohim has power to help and to overthrow. And Amatziyahu said to the man of Elohim, But what do we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Yisrael? And the man of Elohim answered, Yahuwah has more to give you than this. So Amatziyahu dismissed the army that had come to him from Ephraim to go back home. And they were greatly enraged against Yehuda, and they returned home in a rage. And Amatziyahu strengthened himself and led his people and went to the Valley of Salt and struck 10,000 of the sons of Sair. And the sons of Yehuda took captive another 10,000 alive, and they brought them to the top of the rock and threw them down from the top of the rock. And all of them were dashed to pieces. And the soldiers of the army which Amatziyahu had sent back from going with him to battle, they raided the cities of Yehuda from Shamaron to Bethharon and struck 3,000 in them and took much spoil. And it came to be after Amatziyahu came from striking the Edomites that he brought the mighty ones of the people of Sair and set them up to be his mighty ones and bowed down before them and burned incense to them. Therefore the displeasure of Yahuwah burned against Amatziyahu and he sent him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought the mighty ones of the people, which did not deliver their own people from your hand? And then it came to be, as he talked with him, that the sovereign said to him, Have we appointed you counselor to the sovereign? Stop! Why should they strike you? Then the prophet stopped and said, I know that Elohim has counseled to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. And Amatziyahu, sovereign of Yehuda, took counsel and sent to Yoash, son of Yehoahaz, and sent to Yoash, son of Yehoahaz, son of Yehu, sovereign of Israel, saying, Come, let us look each other in the face. And Yoash, sovereign of Israel, sent to Amatziyahu, sovereign of Yehuda, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son his wife. And a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. You have said, See, I have stricken Edom, and your heart has lifted you up to boast. Now stay at home. Why should you stir up yourself to evil, that you should fall, you and Yehuda with you? But Amatziyahu did not listen, for it came from Elohim in order to give them into the hand of their enemies, because they had sought the mighty ones of Edom. So Yoash, sovereign of Yisrael, went out, and he and Amatziyahu, sovereign of Yehuda, faced one another at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Yehuda. And Yehuda was smitten before Yisrael, and they each fled to his tent. And Yoash, the sovereign of Yisrael, caught Amatziyahu, sovereign of Yehuda, son of Yoash, son of Yehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem, from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate. 400 cubits, and took all the gold and the silver and all the utensils that were found in the house of Elohim with Obed-Edom and the treasures of the sovereign's house and hostages and returned to Shamron. And Amatziyahu, son of Yoash, sovereign of Yehuda, lived 15 years after the death of Yoash, son of Yehoahaz, sovereign of Yisrael. And the rest of the acts of Amatziyahu, from the first to the last, See, are they not written in the book of the sovereigns of Yehuda and Yisrael? And from the time that Amatziyahu turned away from following Yahuwah, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. And they sent after him to Lachish and killed him there. And they brought him on horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Yehuda. Chapter 26 And all the people of Yehuda took Uziyahu, who was sixteen years old and set him up to reign instead of his father Amatziyahu. He built Eloth and restored it to Yehuda after the sovereign slept with his fathers. Uziyahu was sixteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Yekolia of Jerusalem, And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his father Amatziyahu did. And he sought Elohim in the days of Zechariah 
who had understanding in the visions of Elohim. And while he sought Yahuwah, Elohim made him prosper. And he went out and fought against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Yabneh and the wall of Ashdod and built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines. And Elohim helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in Gur Baal and the Meunites. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uziahu, and his name spread as far as the entrance of Mitzrayim, for he strengthened himself greatly. And Uziahu built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the corner buttress, and strengthened them. And he built towers in the wilderness, and dug many wells, for he had much livestock, both in the low country and in the plain, farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soil. And Uzziah had an army of fighting men who went out to battle by divisions, according to the number on their roll, as prepared by Ya'iel, the scribe, and Masayahu, the officer, under the hand of Hanayahu, one of the sovereign's commanders. The total number of the clan chiefs of the mighty brave ones was 2,600, and under their hand was an army of 307,500, that fought with mighty power to help the sovereign against the enemy. And Uziyahu prepared for them, for the entire army, shields and spears and helmets and body armor and bows and sling stones. And he made machines in Jerusalem, devised by skilled men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. And his name spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. But when he became strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he trespassed against Yahuwah his Elohim by entering the Hakal of Yahuwah to burn incense on the slaughter place of incense. And as our Yahuwah the priest went in after him, and with him were eighty priests of Yahuwah who were brave men. And they stood up against sovereign Uzi Yahuwah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzi Yahuwah, to burn incense to Yahuwah. But for the priests, the sons of Aharon, who are set apart to burn incense, get out of the set-apart place, for you have trespassed, and there is no esteem to you from Yahuwah Elohim. And Uzi Yahuwah's wroth, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priests in the house of Yahuwah, besides the incense slaughter place. And Azar Yahu, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him and saw that he was leprous on his forehead, and they hurried him from there. And he also hurried to get out, because Yahuwah had struck him. And sovereign Uziyahu was a leper until the day of his death, and dwelt in a separate house, because he was a leper, for he was cut off from the house of Yahuwah. And Yotham, his son, was over the sovereign's house, ruling the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Uziyahu from the first to the last, the prophet Yeshiyahu, the son of Amatz, wrote, So Uziyahu slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial place, which belongs to the sovereigns. For they said, He is a leper. And Yotam, his son, reigned in his place. Chapter 27 Yotam was twenty-five years old when he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Yerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his father Uziyahu had done. Only he did not come into the Hakal of Yahuwah, and the people continued to act corruptly. He built the upper gate of the house of Yahuwah, and he built much on the wall of Ophel. And he built cities in the hill country of Yehuda, and in the forest he built palaces and towers. And he fought with the sovereign of the Ammonites, and had strong victory over them. And the children of Ammon gave him in that year one hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand cores of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. This is what the children of Ammon paid him, also in the second and third years. And Yotham strengthened himself, for he prepared his ways before Yahuwah his Elohim. And the rest of the acts of Yotham, and all his battles, and his ways, See, they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Yisrael and Yehuda. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. 
So Yotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and his son Ahaz reigned in his place. Chapter 28 Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and he did not do what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, as his father David had done, and walked in the ways of the sovereigns of Yisrael, and he made molded images for the Baals, and he himself burned incense in the valley of the son of Hanom, and burned his children in the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom Yahuwah dispossessed from before the children of Yisrael, and slaughtered and burned incense on the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Therefore Yahuwah his Elohim gave him into the hand of the sovereign of Aram, and they struck him and took many of them away as captives and brought them to Darmasek. And he was also given into the hand of the sovereign of Yisrael, who struck him with a great slaughter. And Pekah, son of Remeliahu, killed 120,000 in Yehuda in one day, all brave men, because they had forsaken Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers. And Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Masiyahu, son of the sovereign, and Azrakam, the officer over the house, and Elkanah, who was second to the sovereign. And the children of Israel took captive from their brothers two hundred thousand women, sons and daughters, and they also seized from them much spoil, and they brought the spoil to Shamaron. But a prophet of Yahuwah was there, whose name was Oded, and he went out before the army that came to Shamaron and said to them, See, because Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, was displeased with Yahuda, he has given them into your hand, and you have killed them in a rage that reaches up to the heavens. And now you are planning to make the children of Yehuda and Jerusalem your male and female slaves. But are you not also guilty before Yahuwah your Elohim? Now, therefore, listen to me, and return the captives whom you have taken captive from your brothers, for the heat of the wrath of Yahuwah is upon you. And some of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariahu, son of Yohanan, Berkayahu, son of Meshlamoth, and Yezekiyahu, son of Shalom, and Amasa, son of Hadlai, stood up against those who came from the army, and said to them, do not bring the captives here to bring on us guilt before Yahuwah. Are you planning to add to our sins and to our guilt? For our guilt is great, and burning is the wrath of Yisrael. And the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the leaders and all the assembly. And the men who were designated by name rose up and took the captives, and from the spoil they put on all the naked among them, dressed them, and gave them sandals, and gave them food and drink and anointed them, and let all the weak ones ride on donkeys, and brought them to their brothers at Jericho, the city of palm trees, then returned to Shamron. At that time, sovereign Ahaz sent to the sovereigns of Asher to help him, for the Edomites had come again, and struck Yehuda and took away captives. And the Philistines invaded the cities of the low country, and of the south of Yehuda, and captured Beth Shemesh, and Eyalon, and Geroth, and Soko, with its villages, and Timnah, with its villages, and Gimzo, with its villages, and dwelt there. For Yahuwah had brought Yehuda low because of Ahaz, sovereign of Israel. For he brought about a lack of restraint in Yehuda, and trespassed against Yahuwah. And Tiglath Pileser, the sovereign of Asher, came against him, and distressed him, and did not strengthen him. Though Ahaz had taken some of the treasure from the house of Yahuwah, from the house of the sovereign, and from the leaders, and he gave it to the sovereign of Asher, but he did not help him. And in the time of his distress, sovereign Ahaz trespassed even more against Yahuwah. This sovereign Ahaz? And he slaughtered to the mighty ones of Darmasek, those striking him, saying, Because the mighty ones of the sovereign of Aram helped them, I slaughtered them, and they helped me. But they were to cause him and all Yisrael to stumble. And Ahaz gathered the utensils of the house of Elohim, and cut in pieces the utensils of the house of Elohim, and shut the doors of the house of Yahuwah, and made for himself slaughter places in every corner of Jerusalem, and in every city, even the cities of Yehuda. 
He made high places to burn incense to other mighty ones and provoked Yahuwah Elohim of his fathers. And the rest of his acts and all his ways from first to last. See, they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Yehuda and Yisrael. So Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, in Jerusalem. But they did not bring him into the burial sites of the sovereigns of Yisrael. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his place. Chapter 29 Hezekiah began to reign when he was twenty-five years old, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abiah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his father David did. In the first year of his reign, in the first new moon, he opened the doors of the house of Yahuwah and repaired them, and brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them in the open place to the east. And he said to them, Listen to me, O Levites. Now set yourselves apart. Set apart the house of Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers and remove the uncleanness from the set-apart place. For our fathers have trespassed and have done evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, our Elohim, and have forsaken him and have turned their faces away from the dwelling place of Yahuwah and have given their backs. And they have shut the doors of the porch and put out the lamps. And they've not burned incense or offered ascending offerings in the set-apart place to the Elohim of Israel. Therefore the wrath of Yahuwah fell upon Yehuda and Jerusalem, And he has given them up for a trembling, for an astonishment, and for a hissing, as you see with your eyes. And see, because of this our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with Yahuwah Elohim of Israel so that the heat of his wrath turns away from us. My sons, do not be slack, for Yahuwah has chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and to be attendants for him, and burn incense. And the Levites rose up, Machath, son of Amasai, and Yoel, son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kehathites, and of the sons of Mavrari, Kish, son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Yehalalel, and of the Gerashonites, Yoach, son of Zima, and Eden, son of Yoach, and of the sons of Elisaphan, Shimrai, and Ya'iel, and of the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Matanyahu, and of the sons of Chemon, Yehiel, and Shimai, and of the sons of Yeruthan, Shemaiah, and Uziel. And they gathered their brothers and set themselves apart, and went according to the command of the sovereign, at the words of Yahuwah, to cleanse the house of Yahuwah. And the priest came into the inner part of the house of Yahuwah to cleanse it, and brought out all the uncleanness they found in the Hakal of Yahuwah to the courtyard of the house of Yahuwah. Then the Levites received it to take it outside to the Wadi Kidron. And they began to set apart on the first day of the first new moon, and on the eighth day of the eighth new moon, they came to the porch of Yahuwah, And they set apart the house of Yahuwah in eight days. And on the sixteenth day of the first new moon, they had finished. Then they came in to sovereign Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed all the house of Yahuwah and the slaughter place of ascending offerings with all its utensils and the table of the showbread with all its utensils and all the utensils which sovereign Ahaz in his reign had pushed aside when he trespassed. We have prepared and set apart and see, they are before the slaughter place of Yahuwah. And the sovereign Hezekiah rose up early and gathered the heads of the city and went up to the house of Yahuwah. And they brought seven bulls and seven rams and seven lambs and seven male goats for a sin offering for the rain, for the set-apart place, and for Yehuda. And he said to the priests, the sons of Aharon, to offer them on the slaughter place of Yahuwah. So they slew the bulls, and the priests received the blood and sprinkled it on the slaughter place. And they slew the rams and sprinkled the blood on the slaughter place. And they slew the lambs and sprinkled the blood on the slaughter place. And they brought out the male goats of the sin offering before the sovereign and the assembly. And they laid their hands on them. And the priests slew them and with their blood made a sin offering on the slaughter place to make an atonement for all Israel. For the sovereign said that the ascending offering and the sin offering is for all Israel, 
And he appointed the Levites in the house of Yahuwah with cymbals, with harps, and with lyres, according to the command of David and of Gad, seer of the sovereign, and of Nathan the prophet. For the command was by the hand of Yahuwah, by the hand of his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah, who gave the order to offer the ascending offering on the slaughter place. And when the ascending offering began, the singing unto Yahuwah began, with the trumpets and with the instruments of David, sovereign of Israel. And all the assembly were bowing, and the singers singing, and the trumpeters blowing, all this until the ascending offering was completed. And at the completion of the offering, the sovereign and all who were present with him bowed and worshipped, and sovereign Hezekiah, and the rulers ordered the Levites to sing praise to Yahuwah with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. And Hezekiah responded and said, Now that you have ordained yourselves to Yahuwah, come near and bring slaughterings and thank offerings into the house of Yahuwah. And the assembly brought in slaughterings and thank offerings, and all those whose hearts were so moved brought ascending offerings. And the number of the ascending offerings which the assembly brought was seventy bulls, one hundred rams, two hundred lambs, all these for an ascending offering to Yahuwah. And the set-apart gifts were six hundred bulls and three thousand sheep. Only the priests were too few, and were unable to skin all the ascending offerings, So their brothers, the Levites, helped them until the work was completed and until the other priests had set themselves apart. For the Levites were more upright of heart to set themselves apart than the priests. And there was also many ascending offerings with the fat of the peace offerings and with the drink offerings for every ascending offering. Thus the service of the house of Yahuwah was re-established. And Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that Elohim had prepared the people because the matter came about so suddenly. Chapter 30 And Hezekiah sent to all Yisrael and Yehuda, and he also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh to come to the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem to perform the Pesach to Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael. But the sovereign and his leaders and all the assembly in Jerusalem had taken counsel to perform the Pesach in the second new moon, for they were unable to perform it at its time because not enough priests had set themselves apart, and the people had not gathered at Jerusalem. And the matter was right in the eyes of the sovereign and in the eyes of all the assembly. And they settled the matter, to send a call to all Yisrael, from Beersheba to Dan, to come to perform a Pesach to Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time, as it is written. And the rulers went to all Yisrael and Yehuda with the letters from the sovereign and his leaders, and spoke according to the command of the sovereign. Children of Yisrael, turn back to Yahuwah Elohim of Avraham, Yitzhak in Yisrael, so that he returns to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the sovereigns of Asher. And do not be like your fathers and like your brothers, who trespassed against Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers, so that he gave them up to ruin as you see. Now, do not stiffen your neck like your fathers. Stretch forth the hand to Yahuwah and come to his set-apart place which he has set apart forever and serve Yahuwah your Elohim so that his burning wrath turns away from you. For if you turn back to Yahuwah, your brothers and your children shall be shown compassion by their captors even to return to this land. For Yahuwah your Elohim shows favor and compassion and does not turn his face from you, if you turn back to him. And the runners passed from city to city throughout the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, as far as Zebulun. But they were laughing at them and mocking them, some from Asher and Manasseh, and from Zebulun, however, humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also the hand of Elohim was on Yehuda to give them one heart to do the command of the sovereign and the rulers at the word of Yahuwah. And many people, a very great assembly, gathered at Jerusalem to perform the festival of Matzot in the second new moon. And they rose up and removed the slaughter places that were in Jerusalem. And they removed all the incense slaughter places 
and threw them into the Wadi Kidron. Then they slew the Pesach on the fourteenth day of the second new moon. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed and set themselves apart and brought the ascending offering to the house of Yahuwah. And they stood in their place according to their right ruling, according to the Torah of Moshe, the man of Elohim. The priests sprinkled the blood from the hand of the Levites. For many in the assembly had not set themselves apart. Therefore the Levites were over the slaughter of the Pesachim. For everyone who is not clean, to set them apart to Yahuwah. For many of the people, many from Ephraim and Manasseh, Yisikar and Zebulun, had not been cleansed. Yet they ate the Pesach contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah who prayed for them, saying, Yahuwah who is good, provide atonement for everyone who has prepared his heart to seek Elohim. Yahuwah Elohim of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the cleansing of the set-apart place. And Yahuwah listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. And the children of Israel who were in Jerusalem performed the festival of Matzot seven days with great joy. And the Levites and the priests praised Yahuwah day by day with instruments of praise before Yahuwah. And Hezekiah spoke to the heart of all the Levites, those having good understanding concerning Yahuwah. So they ate during the appointed time seven days, slaughtering slaughterings of peace offerings and making confession to Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers. And all the assembly took counsel to perform another seven days, and they performed it another seven days with joy. For Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda, presented to the assembly a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep, and the rulers presented to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests set themselves apart. And all the assembly of Yehuda rejoice, and the priests and the Levites, and all the assembly who had come from Israel, and the sojourners who came from the land of Israel, and those who dwelt in Yehuda, and there came to be great joy in Jerusalem. For since the days of Shelomah, son of David, the sovereign of Israel, the like of this had not been in Jerusalem. And the priests, the Levites, rose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard. And their prayer came up to his set apart dwelling place to heaven. Chapter 31 And at the completion of all this, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Yehuda, and broke down the pillars, and cut down the Asherim, and tore down the high places and the slaughter places from all Yehuda and Benjamin, and in Ephraim, or Manasseh, even to completion. Then all the children of Israel returned to their own cities, each to his own possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and of the Levites according to their divisions, each according to his service of the priests and Levites for ascending offerings and peace offerings, to serve and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the camp of Yahuwah, and the sovereign portion of his possessions for the ascending offerings, for the morning and evening ascending offerings and the ascending offerings for the Sabbaths, and for the new moons, and for the appointed times as it is written in the Torah of Yahuwah. And he said to the people, those who dwelt in Jerusalem, to give the portion for the priests and the Levites, so that they are strengthened in the Torah of Yahuwah. And as the word spread, the children of Israel brought large quantities of the first fruits of grain and wine, and oil and honey, and of all the increase of the field, they brought in the tithe of all a large amount. And the children of Israel and Yehuda, those who dwelt in the cities of Yehuda, brought the tithe of cattle and sheep. Even the tithe of set-apart gifts, which were set apart to Yahuwah their Elohim, were brought in, and they gave heaps, heaps. In the third new moon, they began to pile up the heaps, and they finished in the seventh new moon. And Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, and they blessed Yahuwah and his people, Yisrael. And Hezekiah asked the priests and the Levites about the heaps. And Azar Yahu, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since they began to bring the offerings into the house of Yahuwah, we have had enough to eat and have plenty left, for Yahuwah has blessed his people, and this great amount is left over. And Hezekiah ordered them to prepare rooms in the house of Yahuwah, and they prepared them. Then they brought in the contributions and the tithes and the set-apart gifts, 
trustworthily, and Koniyahu, the Levite, was leader over them, and Shimei his brother was the next, and Yehiel, and Azaziahu, and Nahath, and Asahel, and Yeremoth, and Yozabad, and Eliel, and Yisimikyahu, and Mahath, and Beniyahu were overseers under the hand of Koniyahu, and Shimei his brother, by order of Hezekiahu the sovereign. And Azariahu, the ruler of the house of Elohim, and Kore, sons of Yimna, the Levite, the keeper of the east gate, was over the voluntary offerings to Elohim, to distribute the offerings of Yahuwah and the most set apart gifts. And under his hands were Eden and Minyamin, and Yeshua, and Shemayahu, Emaryahu, and Shekinyahu, in the cities of the priests, to distribute trustworthily to their brothers by divisions to the great as well as the small, besides those males from three years old and up who were written in the genealogy. They distributed to everyone who entered the house of Yahuwah his daily portion for the work of his service by his division, and to the priests who were written in the genealogy according to their father's house, and to the Levites from twenty years old upward by their duties and their divisions, and to all listed in the genealogy, their little ones and their wives, their sons and daughters, all the company of them. For in their trustworthiness they set themselves apart in set-apartness. And for the sons of Aharon the priests, who were in the fields of the open land of their cities, in each and every city there were men who were called by the names to distribute portions to all the males among the priests, and to all who were listed by genealogies among the Levites. And Hezekiah did this in all Yehuda, and he did what was good and what was right, and what was true before Yahuwah his Elohim. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of Elohim, in the Torah and in the command, to seek his Elohim with all his heart, he did and prospered. Chapter 32 After these matters and this trustworthiness, Sennacherib, sovereign of Asher, came, and he entered Yehuda, and encamped against the cities of defense, and said to break them open to himself. And Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come, and his face was set to fight against Jerusalem. And he took counsel with his rulers and mighty men to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. And many people were gathered, and they stopped all the springs and the stream that ran through the land, saying, Why should the sovereigns of Asher come and find much water? And he strengthened himself, and built up all the wall that was broken, and raised it up to the towers, and the outside of it another wall, and strengthened Milo, the city of David, and made large numbers of weapons and shields. And he appointed battle officers over the people, and gathered them to him in the open space at the city gate, and spoke to their hearts, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, nor be cast down before the sovereign of Asher, nor before all the army that is with him. For with us there are more than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is Yahuwah our Elohim to help us and to fight our battles. And the people leaned on the words of Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda. After this, Sennacherib, the sovereign of Asher, sent his servants to Jerusalem, but he himself and all his power with him against Lachish, to Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda, and to all Yehuda who were with him in Jerusalem, saying, On what are you trusting that you remain in Jerusalem under siege? Is Hezekiah not persuading you to give yourselves over to die by scarcity of food and by thirst, saying, Yahuwah our Elohim shall deliver us from the hand of the sovereign of Asher? Has not Hezekiah himself taken away his high places and his slaughter places, and ordered Yehuda and Jerusalem, saying, Bow yourselves before one slaughter place and burn incense on it. Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the other lands? Were the mighty ones of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who was there among all the mighty ones of those nations that my fathers put under the ban that could deliver his people from my hand 
that your Elohim should be able to deliver you from my hand. And now do not let Hezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this, and do not believe him, for no mighty one of any nation or reign was able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers, much less your Elohim to deliver you from my hand. And his servant spoke even more against Yahuwah Elohim and against his servant Hezekiah. And he wrote letters to reproach Yahuwah Elohim of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the mighty ones of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the Elohim of Hezekiah shall not deliver his people from my hand. Then they called out with a loud voice in the language of Yahuda to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten them and to trouble them in order to capture the city. And they spoke against the Elohim of Jerusalem, as against the mighty ones of the people of the earth, the work of men's hands. And sovereign Hezekiah and the prophet Yeshiyahu, son of Amotz, prayed about this and cried out to the heavens. And Yahuwah sent a messenger who cut down every mighty brave one, both the leader and the commander in the camp of the sovereign of Asher, and he returned shamefaced to his own land and went into the house of his mighty one. And there some of his own offspring caused him to fall by the sword. Thus Yahuwah saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the sovereign of Asher, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to Yahuwah at Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda. And he was exalted in the eyes of all nations thereafter. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And he prayed to Yahuwah, and he spoke to him and appointed a sign for him. However, Hezekiah did not repay according to the good done to him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore wrath came upon him and upon Yehuda and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of Yahuwah did not come upon them in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah had much riches and esteem, and he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold, and for precious stones, and for spices, and for shields, and for all desirable utensils, and storehouses for the harvest of grain, and wine and oil, and stalls for all kinds of livestock, and folds for flocks. And he made cities for himself and possessions of great numbers of flocks and herds, for Elohim gave him much property. And Hezekiah himself had stopped the upper outlet of the waters of Gihon and directed them to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all his work. However, with the envoys of the princes of Babel, whom they sent to ask him about the wonder that was done in the land, Elohim left him in order to try him to know all that was in his heart. And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his loving commitment, see, they are written in the vision of Yeshiyahu the prophet, son of Amotz, in the book of the sovereigns of Yehuda and Yisrael. So Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper burial sites of the sons of David. And all Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem esteemed him at his death. And Manasseh his son reigned in his place. Chapter 33 Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-five years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to the abominations of the nations whom Yahuwah dispossessed from before the children of Israel. For again he rebuilt the high places, which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and raised up slaughter places for the Baals, and made Asherim, and bowed himself to all the host of the heavens, and served them. And he built slaughter places in the house of Yahuwah, of which Yahuwah had said, In Jerusalem is my name forever. And he built slaughter places for all the host of the heavens in the two courtyards of the house of Yahuwah. And he made his sons pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and practice magic and used divination and witchcraft, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of Yahuwah to provoke him. And he placed a carved image of the idol, 
which he had made in the house of Elohim, of which Elohim had said to David and to Shelomah his son, In this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I put my name forever. And no more shall I remove the foot of Israel from the soil which I have appointed for your fathers, only if they guard to do all that I have commanded them, according to all the Torah and the laws and the right rulings by the hand of Moshe. Thus Manasseh led Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem astray, to do more evil than the nations whom Yahuwah had destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahuwah spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they did not listen. Therefore Yahuwah brought upon them the commanders of the army of the sovereign of Asher, who captured Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze shackles, and made him go to Babel. And when he was in distress, he sought the face of Yahuwah his Elohim, and humbled himself greatly before the Elohim of his fathers, and prayed to him. And he was moved by his entreaty, and heard his supplication, and brought him back to Jerusalem into his reign. And Manasseh knew that Yahuwah was Elohim. And after this he built a wall outside the city of David on the west of Gihon, in the Wadi, and as far as the entrance of the fish gate. And it went around Ophel, and he made it exceedingly high. And he put army commanders in all the walled cities of Yehuda, And he removed the foreign mighty ones and the idol from the house of Yahuwah, and all the slaughter places that he had built in the mount of the house of Yahuwah and in Jerusalem. And he threw them out of the city. And he built the slaughter place of Yahuwah and slaughtered slaughterings of peace offerings and thank offerings on it and ordered Yehuda to serve Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. But the people were still slaughtering on the high places, though only to Yahuwah their Elohim. And the rest of the acts of Manasseh, his prayer to his Elohim, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, see they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Israel. And his prayer, and his entreaty, and all his sin, and his trespass in the places where he built high places, and set up the Asherim and the carved images before he was humbled. See, they are written among the words of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house, and his son Ammon reigned in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, as his father Manasseh had done. And Ammon slaughtered to all the carved images which his father Manasseh had done, and served them. And he did not humble himself before Yahuwah, as his father Manasseh had humbled himself, for Ammon trespassed more and more. And his servants conspired against him and killed him in his own house. But the people of the land struck all those who had conspired against sovereign Ammon. And the people of the land set up his son, Yoshiyahu, to reign in his place. Chapter 34 Yoshiahu was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem, And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, and walked in the ways of his father David, and did not turn aside right or left. And in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the Elohim of his father David. And in the twelfth year he began to cleanse Yahuda and Jerusalem from the high places, and the Asherim, and the carved images, and the molded images. And they broke down the slaughter places of the Baals in his presence, and the sun pillars which were above them he cut down. And the Asherim and the carved images and the molded images he smashed, and ground them up and strewed it on the surface of the burial sites of those who had slaughtered to them. And he burned the bones of the priests on their slaughter places, and cleansed Yahuda and Jerusalem. And in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Shimon, as far as Naphtali, in their ruins all around. And he broke down the slaughter places in the Asherim, and ground the carved images into dust, and cut down all the sun pillars throughout all the land of Israel, and returned to Jerusalem. And in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had cleansed the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, son of Atzaliyahu, and Masiyahu, the head of the city, and Yoach, son of Yoachaz, 
the recorder, to repair the house of Yahuwah his Elohim. And they went to Chilkiyahu, the high priest, and they gave the silver that was brought into the house of Elohim, which the Levites, who kept the doors, had gathered from the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, and from all the remnant of Israel, and from all Yehuda and Benjamin, and which they had brought back to Jerusalem, And they gave it in the hand of the workmen, those appointed over the house of Yahuwah. And they gave it to the workmen who worked in the house of Yahuwah, to repair and strengthen the house. And they gave it to the craftsmen and to the builders, to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings, and for beams for the houses which the sovereigns of Yehuda had destroyed. And the men did the work trustworthily, and over them were appointed Yahath and Obed-Yahu the Levites, of the sons of Merari, and Zechariah, and Meshulam, of the sons of the Kehathites, to oversee, and of the Levites, all of whom were skilled in instruments of song, and over the burden-bearers, and overseers of all who did work in any kind of service. And of the Levites were scribes and officers and gatekeepers. And when they brought out the silver that was brought into the house of Yahuwah, Hilakiyahu the priest found the book of the Torah of Yahuwah given by Moshe. Then Hilakiyahu responded and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the Torah in the house of Yahuwah. And Hilakiyahu gave the book to Shaphan, And Shaphan brought the book to the sovereign, and brought the sovereign word, saying, All that has been given into the hand of your servants they are doing. And they have poured out the silver that was found in the house of Yahuwah, and have given it into the hand of those appointed and the workmen. And Shaphan the scribe informed the sovereign, saying, Hilakiyahu the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the sovereign. And it came to be when the sovereign heard the words of the Torah, that he tore his garments. And the sovereign commanded Hilakiyahu, Ahikam son of Shaphan, and Abdon son of Micah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the sovereign, saying, Go, inquire of Yahuwah for me, and for him who is left in Israel, and in Yehuda concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of Yahuwah that is poured out on us because our fathers have not guarded the word of Yahuwah to do according to all that is written in this book. Then Hilkiahu and those of the sovereign went to Hulda, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, son of Tokath, son of Hasara, keeper of the wardrobe, who was dwelling in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her about this. And she said to them, Thus said Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel. Say to the man who sent you to me. Thus said Yahuwah, See, I am bringing evil on this place and on its inhabitants, all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the sovereign Yehuda, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other mighty ones to provoke me with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath is poured out on this place and is not quenched. And to the sovereign of Yehuda, who sent you to inquire of Yahuwah, say this to him. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, whose words you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before Elohim when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants, and you humbled yourself before me, and you tore your garments and wept before me, I also have heard, declares Yahuwah, See, I am gathering you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your burial site in peace, so that your eyes would not see all the evil that I am bringing on this place and its inhabitants. So they brought back word to the sovereign, and the sovereign sent and gathered all the elders of Yehuda and Jerusalem. And the sovereign went up to the house of Yahuwah with all the men of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, both great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of Yahuwah. And the sovereign stood in his place and made a covenant before Yahuwah to follow Yahuwah and to guard his commands and his witnesses and his laws with all his heart and all his being to do the words of the covenant that were written in this book.
and he made stand all who were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of Elohim, the Elohim of their fathers. And Yoshiyahu removed all the abominations from all the lands that belonged to the children of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel diligently serve Yahuwah their Elohim. All his days they did not turn away from following Yahuwah, Elohim of their fathers. Chapter 35 And Yoshiyahu performed a Pesach to Yahuwah in Jerusalem, and they slew the Pesach on the fourteenth day of the first new moon. And he set the priests in their duties and strengthened them for the service of the house of Yahuwah, and said to the Levites who were teaching all Yisrael, who were set apart to Yahuwah, Put the set-apart ark in the house which Shalomah, son of David, sovereign of Israel, built. It is no longer to be a burden on your shoulders. Now serve Yahuwah your Elohim and his people, and prepare by the Father's houses according to your divisions, by the writing of David, sovereign of Israel, and by the writing of Shalomah his son. And stand in the set-apart place by the divisions of the Father's houses of your brothers, the lay people and the portion of the fathers' houses of the Levites, and slay the Pesach, and set yourselves apart, and prepare for your brothers to do according to the word of Yahuwah, by the hand of Moshe. And Yoshiyahu gave the lay people lambs and young goats from the flock, all for Pesachim, for every one present to the number of thirty thousand and three thousand cattle. These were from the sovereign's possessions and his leaders contributed a voluntary offering to the people, to the priests and to the Levites, Hilkiah and Zechariahu and Yechiel, leaders of the house of Elohim, gave to the priests for the Pesachim 2,600 cattle. And Konanyahu, his brothers, Shemayahu, Nathaniel, and Hashabayahu, and Yael, and Yozabad, chiefs of the Levites, gave to the Levites for Pesachim 5,500 cattle. And the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their places, and the Levites in their divisions, according to the command of the sovereign. And they slew the Pesach, and the priests sprinkled out of their hands, while the Levites were skinning. And they removed the ascending offerings to give them to the divisions of the fathers' houses of the lay people, to bring to Yahuwah as it is written in the book of Moshe, and the same with the cattle. So they roasted the Pesach with fire, according to the right ruling, and they boiled the set-apart offering in pots, and in cauldrons, and in bowls, and brought them speedily to all the lay people. And afterward, they prepared for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aharon, were offering ascending offerings and fat until night. So the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aharon. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their places, according to the command of David, and Asaph, and Haman, and Yerathan, the seer of the sovereign. And the gatekeepers at each gate did not have to leave their position, because their brothers the Levites prepared for them. And all the service of Yahuwah was prepared that day to perform the Pesach, to offer ascending offerings on the slaughter place of Yahuwah, according to the command of sovereign Yoshiyahu. And the children of Israel, who were present, performed the Pesach at that time, and the festival of Matzot for seven days. There had not been a Pesach performed in Israel like it since the days of Shemuel the prophet, and none of the sovereigns of Israel had performed such a Pesach as Yoshiyahu performed, with the priests and the Levites and all Yehuda and Yisrael who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, In the eighteenth year of the reign of Yoshiyahu, the Pesach was performed. After all this, when Yoshiyahu had prepared the house, Nico, sovereign of Mitzrayim, came up to fight against Karkamesh by the Euphrates, and Yoshiyahu went out against him. And he sent messengers to him, saying, What have I to do with you, sovereign of Yehuda? I am not coming against you this day, but am against the house with which I am fighting. For Elohim commanded me to make haste. Leave Elohim alone, who is with me, lest he destroy you. However, Yoshiyahu would not turn his face from him, 
but disguised himself to fight against him, and did not listen to the words of Nico from the mouth of Elohim, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at sovereign Yoshiyahu, and the sovereign said to his servants, Take me away, for I am severely wounded. And his servants took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of the burial sites of his fathers. And all Yehuda and Jerusalem were mourning for Yoshiyahu, and Yermiyahu lamented for Yoshiyahu. And to this day, all the singing men and the singing women speak of Yoshiyahu in their lamentations, and made it a law in Israel. And see, they are written in the laments. And the rest of the acts of Yoshiyahu, and his loving commitment, according to what was written in the Torah of Yahuwah, and his acts from the first to the last. See, they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Israel and Yehuda. Chapter 36 And the people of the land took Yehoahaz, son of Yoshiahu, and set him up to reign in his father's place in Jerusalem. Yehoahaz was twenty-three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three new moons in Jerusalem. And the sovereign of Mitzrayim turned him aside in Jerusalem and imposed on the land a levy of one hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the sovereign of Mitzrayim made his brother Eliakim sovereign over Yehuda and Jerusalem, and changed his name to Yehoiakim. And Nico took Yehoahaz, his brother, and brought him to Mitzrayim. Yehoiakim was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah his Elohim. Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came up against him and bound him in bronze shackles to take him away to Babel. And Nebuchadnezzar brought some of the utensils from the house of Yahuwah to Babel and put them in his hekal at Babel. And the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and what was found against him, see, they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Israel and Yehuda. Then Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his place. Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three new moons in ten days, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. And at the turn of the year, sovereign Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babel with the valuable utensils from the house of Yahuwah, and made Zedekiah, Jehoiakim's brother, sovereign over Yehuda and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah his Elohim. He did not humble himself before the army Yahu the prophet, who spoke from the mouth of Yahuwah. And he also rebelled against sovereign Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by Elohim. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. Also, all the heads of the priests and the people trespassed more and more, according to all the abominations of the nations. And they defiled the house of Yahuwah, which he had set apart in Jerusalem. And Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them. For he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they were mocking the messengers of Elohim, and despising his words and scoffing at his prophets, until the wrath of Yahuwah arose against his people, until there was no healing. Therefore he brought against them the sovereign of the Kasdim, and he killed their young men with the sword in the house of their set-apart place, and had no compassion on young man or maiden, on the aged or the weak. He gave all into his hand. And all the utensils from the house of Elohim great and small, and the treasures of the house of Yahuwah, and the treasures of the sovereign, and of his leaders, all these he brought to Babel, and they burned the house of Elohim, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem, and burned all its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its valuable utensils. And those who escaped from the sword he exiled to Babel, where they became servants to him, and his sons, until the rain of the reign of Persia, in order to fill the word of Yahuwah by the mouth of Yermiyahu, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. 
as long as she lay waste, she kept Sabbath until 70 years were completed. And in the first year of Koresh, sovereign of Persia, in order to accomplish the word of Yahuwah by the mouth of Yermiyahu, Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Koresh, sovereign of Persia, so that he called out in all his reign, and also put it in writing, saying, Thus said Koresh, sovereign of Persia, Yahuwah Elohim of the heavens has given me all the reins of the earth, and he has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Yehuda. Whoever is among you of all his people, Yahuwah his Elohim be with him, and let him go up. The Book of Matthew, Matthew, Chapter 1 The Book of the Genealogy of Yahshua, Messiah, Son of David, Son of Abraham. Abraham brought forth Yitzhak, and Yitzhak brought forth Jacob, and Jacob brought forth Yehuda and his brothers, and Yehuda brought forth Peretz and Zira by Tamar. And Peretz brought forth Hetzron, and Hetzron brought forth Ram, and Ram brought forth Aminadab, and Aminadab brought forth Nachashon, and Nachashon brought forth Salmon, and Salmon brought forth Boaz by Rechab, and Boaz brought forth Obed by Ruth, and Obed brought forth Yeshai, and Yeshai brought forth David, the sovereign. And David the sovereign brought forth Shelemah by Uriah's wife. And Shelemah brought forth Rehabam. And Rehabam brought forth Abiah. And Abiah brought forth Asa. And Asa brought forth Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat brought forth Yoram. And Yoram brought forth Uzziah. And Uzziah brought forth Yotham. And Yotham brought forth Ahaz. And Ahaz brought forth Hezekiah, and Hezekiah brought forth Manasseh, and Manasseh brought forth Ammon, and Ammon brought forth Yoshiahu, and Yoshiahu brought forth Yekonia, and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babel, and after the exile to Babel, Yokinaya brought forth Sheltiel, and Sheltiel brought forth Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel brought forth Abihud, and Abihud brought forth Abner, and Abner brought forth Eliakim, and Eliakim brought forth Azor, and Azor brought forth Zadok, and Zadok brought forth Akim, and Akim brought forth Elihud, and Elihud brought forth Eleazar, and Eleazar brought forth Matan, and Matan brought forth Jacob, and Jacob brought forth Yosef the husband of Miriam, of whom was born Yahshua, who is called Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David were fourteen generations, and from David until the exile to Babel were fourteen generations, and from the exile to Babel until the Messiah were fourteen generations. But the birth of Yahshua Messiah was as follows. After his mother Miriam was engaged to Yosef, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant from the set-apart spirit. And Yosef, her husband, being righteous and not wishing to make a show of her, had in mind to put her away secretly. But while he thought about this, see, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of David, do not be afraid to take Miriam as your wife. For that which is in her was brought forth from the set-apart spirit, and she shall give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. And all this came to be in order to fill what was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet, saying, See, an Alma shall conceive, and she shall give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means El with us. And Yosef, awaking from his sleep, and did as the messenger of Yahuwah commanded him, and took his wife, but knew her not until she gave birth to her son, the firstborn.
and he called his name Yahshua. Chapter 2 And Yeshua, having been born in Bethlehem of Yehuda in the days of Herodes, the sovereign, see, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born sovereign of the Yehudim? For we saw his star in the east, and have come to do reverence to him. And Herodes, the sovereign, having heard, was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And having gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Yehuda, for thus has it been written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Yehuda, you are by no means least among the rulers of Yehuda, for out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people Yisrael. Then Herodes, having called the Magi secretly, learned exactly from them what time the star appeared. And having sent them to Bethlehem, he said, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me, so that I too might go and do reverence to him. And having heard the sovereign, they went, and see the star which they had seen in the east went before them, until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Miriam, his mother, and fell down and did reverence to him. And opening their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream that they should not return to Herodes, they departed for their own country by another way. And when they had left, see, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to Yosef in a dream, saying, Arise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Mitzrayim, and remain there until I bring you word, for Herodes is about to seek the child to destroy him. And rising up, he took the child and his mother by night, and departed for Mitzrayim, and remained there until the death of Herodes, to fill what was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet, saying, Out of Mitzrayim I have called my son. Then Herodes, having seen that he was fooled by the Magi, was greatly enraged, and he sent forth and slew all the male children in Bethlehem and in all its borders from two years old and under, according to the time which he had exactly learnt from the Magi. Then was filled what was spoken by Yeremiyahu the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and weeping, in great mourning, Raquel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they were no more. And Herodes, having died, see, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared in a dream to Yosef in Mitzrayim, saying, Arise, and take the child and his mother, and go into the land of Yisrael. For those seeking the life of the child are dead. And rising up, he took the child and his mother, and came into the land of Yisrael. But hearing that Archelaus was reigning over Yehuda instead of his father Herodes, he was afraid to go there. And having been warned in a dream, he departed to the parts of Galil, and came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Thus to fill what was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene.